Today's subject comes from a viewer suggestion. YouTube user Kalari wonders just how big a rogue wave can get. Rogue waves, also called monster waves or freak waves, are the mysterious phenomenon of a single swell on the water rising up to dangerous proportions. They can be especially strong in stormy conditions, but a rogue wave is possible even when the weather is favorable. To understand why they're such a terror, consider this scene, suggested by one survivor of a rogue wave encounter. You're on the deck near the bow of a cruise ship, leaning over the railing on a cool but sunny summer day in the Arctic Barents Sea. You can just see the outline of snowy mountains along the Norwegian coast in the far distance if you turn to look over your shoulder. Off the ship's port side, the waves are high but the sky is clear and the course is smooth. Over the course of a few seconds though, you see something strange develop, like a hill sprouting out from the surface of the water. One wave rises into a ridge as if trying to see over its neighbors until it really sticks out far above the pack. It begins to break into whitecaps as it nears the ship. You realize it's time to run and so you don't see the moment it hits, but you'll always remember the feeling of being thrown to the deck and seeing supplies, glass, and furniture flying, all to the sound of a crash that seems to come from every direction at once. It turns out the ship can handle this kind of strike, but a little notice would have helped. You have no idea how the other passengers fared. Even under calm conditions, waves near the shore can still reach monstrous size. Pro surfers at beaches like Nazaré, Portugal take on swells in excess of 80 feet thanks to an offshore canyon that concentrates the wave energy. But on the open ocean, the conventional wisdom used to be that the physics of wind, water, and gravity limited ordinary waves to about 30 feet with 50-foot waves occasionally whipping up in the most extreme weather. Tsunamis, which are caused by earthquakes, volcanoes, and landslides, were an exception, with the splash height from a falling rock reaching especially high, although even tsunamis can appear deceptively small until they approach land. Modern earthquake detection doesn't eliminate the threat from tsunamis, but it does provide some warning. A rogue wave is something else entirely. By definition, it seems not to fit the prevailing wave conditions, spiking to three to six times the height of neighboring waves, without a clear explanation for the abrupt change. Mathematical modeling used to emphasize the familiar uniformity of waves in a series, predicting an outlier the size of a rogue wave anywhere in the world once every 10,000 years. More current models demonstrate much greater variety in wave size. This doesn't really register much if the ocean conditions are calm to begin with, since a single 10-foot wave among a series of 5-foot waves will have no effect on a vessel of any significant size. On the other hand, if conditions are stormy and the seas are already high and choppy, an unexpected tripling or even sextupling of wave height could be deadly. Extreme weather, difficult working conditions, and sometimes grueling activities have always made the lives of professional seafarers precarious. Working in commercial shipping is the second deadliest occupation in the world, while the most dangerous is deep sea fishing. There are 85,000 large ships plying on the waters of the world, carrying goods, resources, and people. On average, at least one of those vessels wrecks every two weeks. One insurance company puts the tally much higher, at two major shipwrecks every week. Of those, about one per year is never located, leaving the mind free to imagine all manner of extreme explanations, both possible and fanciful, such as piracy or spontaneous levitation into outer space. Rogue waves were once on the list of fantastical explanations between Poseidon's wrath and sea monster attacks, but are now well documented as one of the many hazards ships face at sea. Only in 1995 did hard evidence of rogue waves start coming to light. On January 1st of that year, a laser sensor on the Dropner oil rig in the North Sea detected a lone wave 85 feet tall amid a field of 39-foot waves, still huge but well below 50% of the standout, and far higher than the 50-foot limit such rigs were built to handle. Then, in February 1995, the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth II encountered a 95-foot wave, which the captain compared to the cliffs of Dover. Research into rogue waves now seems to make sense. A 1997 analysis on an earlier body of data from Denmark's Gorn oil field uncovered a history of 466 rogue waves in a span of 12 years. The European Space Agency scrutinized 30,000 satellite images looking at 18 square mile blocks of ocean over the course of three weeks in 2001. In that time span, they discovered 10 rogue waves of 82 feet or higher, some as high as 100 feet. 
Their report, released in 2004, showed that while monster waves were exceptional, they were a lot more common than one in every hundred centuries. The data indicated that rogue waves may be especially common in areas of strong ocean currents, such as the Algulas Current in the Indian Ocean off of South Africa. Confronted with an approaching monster wave, a ship's captain will, time permitting, steer straight into it. This is neither a suicidal impulse nor an attack strategy born out of a stress-induced delusion that the wave is a real monster, and banging it with the ship's prow is the only chance at stopping it. The leading tip of the ship is the angle best suited to cutting through water, whereas a sidelong blow carries both a greater risk of structural damage and capsizing the vessel. Don't cancel your next cruise just because of rogue waves. When scientists say they're more common than previously believed, that's a relative statement. Your odds of getting hit by a monster on any given cruise are still incredibly low. Some data indicates that rogue waves actually may be getting less frequent, although the same study shows that the strength of individual rogue waves may be increasing. As far as records go, a little more than 100 feet seems to be about the record for rogue wave activity. But we've really only just begun monitoring the ocean for rogues, so that maximum is subject to revision. Theoretically, a rogue wave could reach almost 200 feet. Does the ocean give you chills, or would you want to live on the high seas if you had the chance? Let us know what you think in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called I Was Trapped Underwater for Three Days. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.